Hello and welcome to part 14 of my video series in using Blender 2.6. This video is actually going to be a two-part video covering several things. Um, basically we're going to be creating a scene with dominoes and we'll be using the Blender game engine to animate an object that's, that pushes over a row of dominoes. So we'll be covering several things. Um, how to use the physics engine in Blender, how to add an animated object to a game engine scene to have it actually affect the physics in the scene, how to uh, change the timing, how to record keyframes from that Blender game engine, and how to render out a quick um, preview animation such as I'm showing you right now. So here's the uh, finished animation. So in Blender, to do this, we have to use a different renderer. Uh, by default, uh, when you make a keyframe uh, of your or an, a frame of your animation, you can press F12 or go to the render image, and that'll make a frame of your movie. But um, in Blender, there's also a game engine, so you can switch the renderer type to the game engine. And when you do that, it's called the Blender game engine. So you change it right there. Um, a few things change over here in your properties window. The um, render tab, which is the camera, will change quite a bit, what's in here, the different options, and the options will change in the physics tab, the very last tab in your row. If you can't see that, just drag your window open over and you'll be able to see the new options in there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and make a, a plane. So I'm going to press Shift A, and I'm going to make a plane, and I'm going to scale it up using my uh, S key. And we're going to make our cube into a domino. So I'm going to press Shift, or S, sorry, Y, uh, to scale it down on the y-axis, and then S, then X, to scale it, to maybe make it narrower. And that looks like a pretty good domino. It could be narrower, but we're playing with physics in Blender, so we're going to make it a little bit more robust, so we have a thicker domino. And now if I go and press P, that's going to run my game engine. And this window is going to change, actually, and show us what the game engine is going to be doing. So let's go ahead and press P, and it does absolutely nothing. And that's because we have to set up our objects in our scene to actually act with physics. Uh, right now our physics type is static for our, um, well, actually all of our objects. Um, to get out of the, the uh, game simulation, I press P to get into it. I'll press escape to get out of it. That's how you get in and out of the game simulator, P and escape. With my domino selected, I'm going to change the physics type to rigid body. And that means that it will now be affected by gravity and collisions with other objects. Now if I press P, it'll fall down because of gravity. But you'll notice that it also falls halfway or partway into your floor. Let's go take a look under here and play that again. Well, it's hard to tell. So I might actually go and um, extrude. So go into edit mode on my ground and press extrude. And make my floor a little bit thicker. That'll help us out with our simulation as well. So now if I go and press P, you'll see that the domino goes partway through the floor. We don't want that, so we're going to fix the collision bounds of this um, domino. So over here in my physics tab, in my properties window, we're going to check collision bounds. And we're going to check the change the bounds type from box to convex hull. Now it's important to realize that you can use any object for simulation. Um, but that doesn't mean that when you want things to bump together and react from each other, that it's actually going to use the mesh that you made. Um, by default, I think it uses just a box. So if you made like a um, like a character, and you wanted to affect other objects with that character, the default box around it would be, or thing that the shape of the uh, area, like the force field that would affect other objects, wouldn't be necessarily the same shape as your character. Um, in fact, it wouldn't be. If you change the collision bounds type to convex hull, it tries to best approximate or use the mesh that you're actually, or the mesh that you actually made. In this case, it's just a cube, and we could leave it on box, but I found that the convex hull works the best for most things. So. You'll notice that my cube or my domino is above the ground, so now if I press P, it will actually fall down. And because it had some inertia one way or the other, it toppled over, and that's good. If we duplicated this, so I press Shift D, and my computer catches up to me, uh, you'll see now that the two objects will react to each other. So, oh, we had one fall straight down. Maybe what I'll do 
So I'll put that one really high up and see what happens. Uh, so one just kind of leaned over against the other one. I'm going to press escape to get out of that if my computer lets me. And let's actually see what happens if we rotate that one just a little bit and simulate that. Aha. I want to see what happens if we make something really kind of different. Aha. Good. Okay. So you can kind of see what happens here. I'm going to undo so both of our dominoes are straight up and down. And I'm going to go to my front view. Come on. There we go. Front and side. And I'm going to kind of start to arrange my domino. So I'm going to put that one not quite on the ground because we don't want to have those two intersect each other. But right about there. And maybe I'll delete that one. And I'll put this one. My computer is being a little bit laggy today as normal. Uh, that's because of my screen recording. I'm going to duplicate this domino. So Shift D and X, I believe. No, Y in this case. Um, so now I'm going to make it right about there, and I'll set them both in Shift D and Y, and there we go. I'll select these ones, Shift D and Y. There we go. Maybe I'll do a few more. Select these three, Shift D, Y. There we go. I'm going to make that floor just a little bit bigger. Uh, I'm going to press S for scale, then Shift Z, so it does not scale on the Z axis. And there we go. So now I should press be able to press P, and they'll all stand up. They might jiggle a little bit. That's um, a little quirk with the uh, physics simulator. Things will kind of jitter around a little bit. You can change some that sometimes by playing with these settings. I'm not going to do that in this video. Um, so now if I go and tilt one of the dominoes, kind of pre-tilt it, and press, and zoom out. You'll notice that you can't change your view once you press P. I'm going to press P, and now I get my domino effect. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and make that straight back up and down again. And I'll save this file. So I'll save it onto my desktop. Oopsie daisy. And I'm going to save this as dom in nose underscore zero one. And so we have that saved. But now we want to add a affecting object. So I'm going to go and press, maybe put my 3D cursor right there. Press shift A, add a cube. This will be our finger, quote unquote finger. Um, and it's going to go ahead and push the dominoes over. So I'm going to make a timeline. And we're going to turn on a keyframe insertion with the red record button. And I'm going to make my first keyframe of it right there. So I can either grab this a little bit and move it, and that'll create a keyframe. Um, or I'm going to undo that. It's not there anymore. Or with this um, red button turned on, I could press I. And that's the insert keyframe menu. So I will let you insert a different kind of keyframe, depending on what you want. We want a location keyframe. The three basic options are location, rotation, and scale. Um, but we're moving it. We're not rotating or scaling that cube. So just location is fine. And it made a keyframe. 20 frames later, I'm going to make it stay there. So I, location. So now our cube has 20 um, still frames. And now in frame 40, we're going to move it um, over here to push the first domino over. And then on frame 60, we're going to have it recoil. So make it move back. So let's just go ahead and play that. Um, I'm going to press play. And that looks like it'll do a good job. But um, if you go into the game simulation, I'm going to save this first, and press P, you'll notice that nothing happens. Um, and this was a great cause of frustration for me. And there aren't a lot of great videos out there, or at least ones that I could find. Um, that would explain all this to you. So I hope this video will help kind of solve that mystery. Um, in order to have animation, like keyframed animation, in our physics simulation, we have to do a couple of things. Um, basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be giving the, these keyframes a name, 
and then we're going to give our cube some logic inside of our game um, simulation so, so that it knows to actually play that animation. Because by default, in the game engine, no animation plays. We actually have to get the, or program the um, game engine or our, our game, essentially, to uh, use or recognize that animation. So, um, if Blender does not freeze, I'm going to go ahead and open up. I'll turn off keyframing, by the way. That's important to do. I'm going to make a new window and open up the dope sheet because in the dope sheet there's a few different modes. The dope sheet, by the way, if you didn't see my animation video uh, called Animation 101, uh, lets us um, edit, move, scale, uh, delete our keyframes. These are all of our keyframes of that cube. Um, but it has different modes, one of which is the dope sheet mode. Another one is called the action editor. And in the action editor is where we can change the um, different actions that our cube has. Now, every time you make uh, an animation, you're actually creating an action, which is actually like a block of, um, of movement or of, of keyframes. And you can actually create separate actions. Um, so if you wanted to create a, a character animation, you could make one cycle of a walk cycle uh, so it's a character, a character walking for two steps, and then that could be an action, and then you can make other actions like a character jumping, character punching, and I'll kind of keep those as separate um, little blocks of animation data, and those little blocks are called actions. Um, the action that we created for this cube is called um, cube action. Uh, the name of it is down here. I'm going to change this to pushy uh, cube, pushy cube. I just name it something funny so that you can re remember it. And it's important to remember how long it is as well. So it's 60 frames long in this case. And now I'm going to change this window type to a, a logic editor. And this is where we're actually going to tell our cube to play in the game simulation. So right now, it still doesn't play. The, the, the cube does not push the dominoes over. So I'll press escape. And inside this logic editor is three different areas. One of them is for sensors, one of them is for controllers, and one of them is for actuators. And this could be really confusing. In fact, I don't know a whole lot about the game engine myself or how to use this really well myself. Although I do understand how to make um, animations happen inside the game editor. So um, the sensor is the thing that's going to trigger something else to happen. So kind of think of it this way. The sensor over here is a thing that triggers something else to happen. The thing that happens, the thing that gets triggered, is the actuator. And the controller is kind of the logical word or the logic that goes in between it. Um, you don't have to underst understand really these things, just follow along. Uh, the sensor that, that we're going to be using, excuse me, the sensor that we're going to be using is going to be called the always sensor, because we want to always be listening. Every time the game kind of refreshes, like the frame refreshes in the game, we want to always be listening for um, something to happen. So the sensor is always going to be running. Um, the sensor is always going to be running, and it's going to trigger an action. In fact, one of those um, animation action blocks that we made. So we're going to change this to action. The actuator type is going to be action. And the controller is going to be ant. So you can kind of think of, it, think of it this way. The scene is always listening, or the cube is always listening. It's always sensing. It's always kind of checking to see if something should happen. And the thing that it's supposed to be doing, so the thing that it's, and the thing that it's supposed to be doing is, that's why the word and is there. Uh, you can think of it like that. It's doing an action. And the action that it's going to be doing is called the uh, pushy cube. And so over here, we're going to select, um, actually, maybe I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see this. Um, the action gets selected right here. So I'm going to click and select Pushy Cube. And remember I mentioned that we have to know how long the animation is? Well, it starts on frame 0, and it ends at frame, I'll just click in there and type 6, 0. Ends at frame 60. So now we have to connect these things, the sensor, the controller, and the actuator. So I'm going to drag this little circle, and it'll make a line, if you click and drag, into the controller. So that little dotted circle right there. Same thing from the controller, which is AND, over to the actuator. And that will do it. So now, I'm going to make this window smaller, so our 3D view window is bigger. And I'm going to press P, 
and the animation plays, and it starts our domino effect.